Welcome to our first podcast in our Unit 11. Now, I'm going to kind of apologize because I said it's our first podcast, but you know what? We're going to actually start in the middle of this packet. Um, This unit, it happens sometimes. We think it's going to go in one order, and then we start actually doing it, and we say, "Mm, you know what? Kind of going to switch the order, but we can deal with it. So everybody needs to be on page 6. And we've been looking a lot of energy and the energy of reactions. And we've talked about that you've heard, we've said the words endothermic, exothermic, and looked at that and felt it. And exo, heat's given off. That means that the system is releasing heat to the surroundings, so the surroundings are getting hotter. And endothermic, the vice versa. The system is absorbing the heat, so the surroundings gets colder. Well, now we're going to look at a different way that we can look at it. Um, First, I just find a place to write this down. We didn't put it anywhere. Okay, what we're going to look at is why reactions happen, and it's called the collision theory. You do not have to write this entire paragraph, but somewhere find some space and write down collision theory. And what it's saying is that when you have a, for a reaction to happen, molecules have to collide. But the problem is that just because you have a collision, that doesn't mean you're always going to have a reaction. Two things have to happen. Right here, you have to have enough energy to collide. And if they don't have enough energy, you're not going to have a reaction. The other thing that you need to have, and so write it down, you need to have enough energy. Other thing is it has to have the proper orientation. Now, we're not going to talk a lot about that. We're more worried about the energy, but I do want you to know that those two things have to happen. Think about when you walk down a hallway, um, and especially our busy hallways and where some of those halls intersect. You definitely are bumping into each other, but just because you bump into each other doesn't mean some kind of big reaction or a fight's going to start. Um, and Fortunately, if something happens that two people might get together with um, enough energy and a lot of times they have that proper orientation, like they're face to face and they're angry, then we might get a reaction, not what we want. A lot of times in chemistry, that's what they want. In a high school um, hallway, that's not what we want. But as you're walking, just think, how many times have you bumped into somebody and it's like, oh, excuse me, excuse me, nothing happens, nothing happens. So nothing is going to happen in chemistry when two molecules collide unless they have enough energy. Well, we have a name for this energy. So now we're at the top of page six. This energy is just what it sounds like, activation energy, energy to get a reaction activated or started. Okay, we're going to start looking at these diagrams. Now this diagram is called a potential energy diagram. So look at here, this is your potential energy, and this is going the reaction process. Read it from left to right. Now when I'm saying this, remember when we're talking, we know that we have reactants on the left side becoming products. This is any generic um, equation that you have, reactants will become products. So when we are reading these diagrams, there's a few things you need to know and make sure you label it. So notice here, reactants, you always start on the left. Just like over here, reactants are always on your left. Now I say always, um, we are going to look at some reversible reactions, but I'm talking about right now in the forward process, read it left to right. So reactants, this is where the reaction started. Okay, so what's happening? You have to get energy, energy. So what's happening here, this is where bonds are being broken. So of my reactants, in this case, I have BRNO. I'm breaking the bonds that are holding these together. So what happens here at the very top, so look at what happens. This is endothermic. And that's what that's showing you is you have to climb the hill. So it's climbing hill that's taking energy. Endothermic takes energy. It takes energy to break the bonds. Okay, at the very top, add this. Um, You have some graphs for yourself on page six. Go ahead and add them to yours. I know it doesn't look exactly like mine, but it's definitely the same kind of look. I just have maybe labeled a little differently. At the top, this is called the activated complex. 
and the activated complex is kind of a mutant. It's not really a reactant. It's not really a product. It doesn't stick around for very long. Nobody really knows what it looks like, but it's kind of a hybrid between the two. So once you get enough energy that these bonds are being broken, look what happens. Then we're going to start forming new bonds. So once you've broken all your bonds, we can start making some new bonds. This releases energy, so therefore it's going to be exothermic, releasing this heat. So look at this. Whee! We can go down. The bonds, you've done all the hard work. Now you can release the heat. Okay, so right here, this is that heat right here. So activation energy. What is that? That is the energy to go from the reactants to the top of the hill. And if that's easier to remember, um, from the reactants, how much energy to climb the hill? Because we're going to ask you down the time how much activation energy, this is how you know. Look at the graph from the bottom to the top. Okay, another thing right here, this is what we've been talking about. We'll look at calculating it different ways. The heat of the reaction. So remember we said heat of reaction is the difference between the heat of the products, not products. Let's try products minus the heat of the reactants. Well, look at what this is telling you. That's what this is. The heat of the reaction is the difference. So this is my products right here. Where we end up is your products. So right here is that heat. The heat difference between your products and your reactants, this amount of heat right here is called your delta H. So look, if you do final minus initial, this is going to give you a negative number. This would be exothermic. So let's kind of look at these graphs. And the expectations, you look at a graph, you're going to be able to tell from the graph if it's endothermic or exothermic. So look at what happens. Again, we're talking about in the forward reaction. In the forward reaction, here is my activation energy, energy to get it started. So what you have to do is compare your positive, your endothermic, to your negative energy. So look at there's a lot, I have much more, I'm releasing a lot more energy than I am taking in. So overall this reaction is exothermic. And this would be a negative. So if I subtracted products minus reactants, you're going to get a negative number. Negative number means it's exothermic. Um, I know some people look at it and say, well, my products are below. They're giving off heat. It's lower than the reactants. You have to figure out the way that kind of sticks in your head. But you need to know that when this is longer than this, if you're releasing more heat than you're taking in, it's overall an exothermic reaction. Well, let's compare it then. Look at the opposite here. So look at here. I have a lot more energy being taken in, breaking those bonds, than I have being released. Still consistent. Always reactants, products. That stays the same. Activation energy is always energy to the top of the hill. That stays the same. Delta H is always the products minus reactants. But this time, if I subtracted, this would give me a positive value. This overall graph is showing a graph of an endothermic reaction. So write down what sticks in your head of how you can tell the difference between that endothermic and an exothermic reaction. Now sometimes we can see that the reaction in reverse. So if it's in reverse, products become reactants, reactants become products. Instead of reading the graph from left to right, you would read the graph from right to left. But what the main thing is to know when you're doing this is that the reactions are opposite. So let's look at this. This is water decomposing. Well, most decompositions are going to be endothermic. It's going to take energy to break apart those bonds. It's the very first thing that you're doing. It takes energy to break those bonds. So in the forward reaction, then, I would say that this is an endothermic. So on your line, you can write endothermic. Okay, but look at the reverse reaction. Just read it then right to left. This is hydrogen plus oxygen. Um, for you in my class, we did this reaction when we um, filled an egg full of hydrogen gas and lit it. And I hope you remember that a lot of energy came out when that egg exploded. So that is an exothermic reaction. So it would be a positive energy reading it from left to right. But in the reverse reaction, it's going to be an exothermic process. Um, so, so if I look at this, again, in the reverse, look at what happens. This, when before, this was my reactants to become products. So just read it right to left. This would become your reactants. 
this would become your products. So we call this a prime, meaning, so if you ever see that prime, it's talking about it in the reverse direction. So in the reverse direction, since this now, I have more endothermic, excuse me, I have more exothermic than endothermic, in the reverse reaction, this would become a exothermic reaction. So you just have to be careful looking at it. I will say for us, most of the time it's just going to be in the forward reaction, but just be really careful to make sure it's saying that, and it's not saying it's in the reverse. Um, in biology, do you remember when they talked about enzymes? Um, most enzymes act as like a surface catalyst, and they help to um, make a reactant excuse me, make a reaction go faster. Well, in chemistry, the way we show that, this is, look at this with an enzyme. Um, so what it, the difference is, look at this activation energy. So with a catalyst, all it does is lowers the activation energy so that reaction can go faster. So it's not a reactant and a product. Look at this, my reactants and products stay exactly in the same place. It's not changing the beginning or the end. What it's just changing is how I get there. So it's like if you all of a sudden find a shortcut to get home, and the shortcut doesn't take as much energy so you can get home faster, that's what a catalyst is. You're still starting at school, getting home. You've just found a safer, quicker way to get there. That is what your catalyst is doing, providing you a different route that doesn't take as much energy. Therefore, you can get there faster. So if you ever see a picture that has like a dotted line or a second line, and it was just saying, you know, you want to have a multiple choice, which one is showing a catalyst? You're showing the one that has that alternate route. Okay, you tell me. Here's Jeopardy. Dun, 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 dun. Just tell me, is this exothermic or endothermic? So whatever kind of in your head has gone through, Yes, you are right, it is exothermic, because look at your products. Your products are lower than your reactants. If you look at it that way, some of you could say, well, this is much smaller than this, so therefore I know I'm releasing a lot more energy than I'm taking in. It's exothermic. Okay, how about this one? Again, looking at it, so my energy, uh, my reactants are at 100, products are at 300, activation energy. What I could also ask you is, oh, what is your activation energy? How much energy did it take to climb the hill? So how much did it take? I started at 100, up to 400. Your activation energy would be 300, how much energy to climb the hill? But that's not what I asked. I asked, is it endothermic or exo? Compare a lot more energy to break the bond, so therefore, overall, we do say it is endothermic. Okay, this is where we can now put numbers to it. So just remember then, and this is how it's going to look, look at, I'm not labeling it for you. So you might in your mind have to go, okay, what was this? This was reactants. Okay, this was my products. Um, what do we call this? Oh yeah, okay, that's my activated complex. This is the vocab you need to get comfortable with. So, activation energy, where was that? Energy to climb the hill. Wow, that was a really, really straight line. Okay, that is my straight line. That is your activation energy. And then what do we say? This, between this, is my heat of reaction. Look at all of this information I can get from this one little graph. So now let's start looking at our questions. The heat content of the reactants. Where are your reactants located? Right here. So you should write down 80 kilojoules. Okay, where are your products? So we said these are my products. And again, let's make our numbers easy. That's 160. Okay, activated complex. Oop. Where is the activated complex loaded, um, located? Activated complex is the top of the hill. Where is that at? That's 240 kilojoules. Okay, activated energy, and notice, in the forward reaction. So that's from the reactants to the products. How much energy to climb the hill? Uh-oh, some math. 240, and I was at 80. What is 240 minus 80? 160 kilojoules. Notice these are all in kilojoules because look at your label right here. Told me it's in kilojoules. Okay, heat of reaction in the forward. So what's my products? My products are at 160. My reactants are at 80. 
products minus reactants, plus I know it's endothermic, it's going to be positive, is a positive 80 kilojoule. So in the forward reaction, then it's going to be endothermic. Okay, let's do the whole thing in reverse. So if it's in reverse, what does that mean? It means all of this is changed, except for active complex stays the same. Because if it's in reverse, now this means this becomes my reactants. Here are my products, activated complex, energy to climb the hill, still not very uh, straight. Here's my delta H. The only thing that's going to change their delta H is the sign. Okay, activated complex didn't change. That's going to be the same. So the heat content, the reactants, where are my reactants now? They're where the products were, so that's 160 kilojoules. Okay, how about the products? Where are they at? 80 kilojoules. Activate complex, that didn't change. That's still up there at 240 kilojoules. The activation energy in reverse, excuse me, so reverse, look at what to climb the hill, 240 to 160. So 240 minus 160, 80 kilojoules. Okay, heat of reaction, products minus reactants. So I have 80 minus 160. So 80 minus 160 gives me a negative 80 kilojoules. The negative sign matters. So that negative sign tells me it's exothermic, but I can also say it's exothermic because I have more energy released than given in. Okay, so we're just going to keep practicing writing these, and a lot of times I'm going to we're going to, have to do it backwards. If I give you starting and ending, you can draw the graph for me. We will see you later.